Hey guys and welcome back to a Let's Play Encased. We are in the phase of the final preparations for the last mission, the final confrontation with Maelstrom. Just did a side quest that gave us access to the server shell, but I think we managed without a server shell so far. Just leave it here. So if you want one, you need to do the side quest for John Kepler, probably in a earlier stage of the game. Right now, let's check the supplies. I think we have enough medkits, enough anagons, a lot of drugs we didn't use at all. Maybe you need to play at a higher difficulty level for that. Perception and deafness might be useful, maybe in the final battle. We need more fuel for the flamethrower. I suppose this is enough for the dart gun. And I think there are some fuel cans in the abandoned airfield. Or what was it called? Abandoned film set. Let's actually get there first. Ah, uh, let's go. Floor level, minus one, lobby. Stock up on fuel for the flamethrower. So we can upgrade the weapons for a final time. And let's get to the abandoned film sets. The car floats gently over the road, swinging slightly on bumps. We turn the steering wheel, look around now and then. And we see something interesting. Let's maybe stop. Maybe it's a traveling salesman. And we notice a prefabricated house on our way across the valley. An artifact from an early days of the dome when a home didn't need half inch metal panels and gun turrets. The house is surrounded by a long abandoned garden. Squat shadows prowl amidst the tall grass and bushes. The paint is chipped and half open door creeps in the breeze. The house looks in uninhabited as if sleeping. The shadows in the garden turn out to be cats, a whole pack of cats keenly watching your every step. They don't seem afraid, but they're shy of strange humans. Let's take a look inside. The inside of the house still looks cozy, though time has begun to take its toll. You peek into the kitchen and living room, but find nothing of interest. Then there's the bedroom. The door is ajar. Through the opening you see a bed with a distinct hump in the middle, covered by a blanket. One, on one side of the bed is a wall with dozens of framed pictures, on the other a closet with many shelves. The room is also crawling with cats, they are sitting on the floor, on the furniture, on the windowsill, they are watching. 
study the photos. Each photo is neatly framed behind glass. Each has a caption. A cat's muzzle looks out from each of them. These must be either current or deceased members of the household. Examine the bed. Blotchy with mildew. You lift one corner and find a dead woman lying on her back beneath, judging by her silver grey hair. She probably died of old age. There are several red corpses alongside the bed, arranged as in a row as if for some kind of rite. Apparently the last one. Search the wardrobe. Nothing valuable in the closet, only some old clothes and personal items. The only thing you find is a dusty photo in one of the drawers, depicting a pretty young woman in the embrace of a tall grim faced man. A cat is sitting on his shoulder. The woman is smiling so happily, the photo itself seems to shine in your hands. Scare the cats away, let's maybe not do that. Will result maybe in a fight. And we will use ammunition. Go outside and walk around the house. There's a grave in the garden by the back wall. Once well cared for, but now overgrown and wild. You stoop to brush sand and leaves from the gravestone. Yuli Morozov is carved into the granite. There's a barely visible imprint of a cat's paw on the stone under the dead date. Continue without stopping, I guess. I think there were some fuel cans here, canisters. Canisters empty. think well maybe crump can do something right Well, that's it for the canisters, apparently. <laughs> I was hoping to find a bit more. Kids. Don't want to waste ammo. Canisters.
Hmm. Yeah, that's probably it. I think we can use that for upgrading the weapons. Canisters, all right. Six. Still have a canister here. I think we can use that to make uh, fuel on the chemistry bench. Possibly. So where can we find a... Well, the John Station. Laboratory and medical aid station. Floor level minus four. Laboratories and hospital. Well, I think we need chemistry. Nothing we actually need. Chemistry workbench. Make some bandages. Also make anagon. Let's make four. Chemical grenade, cryo grenade, shock grenade, stun grenade. Lots of grenades we can make. Attention, attention. 
for Armageddon. <laughs> Psionic explosive device, we need a CPS, unfortunately. Yeah, we don't want to use fuel. We don't want to use ammunition for the dart gun. Immobilizing grenade. A regular frag grenade uses spare parts. I think we need those for upgrading weapons. But we also have a lot of spare parts in the car. Let's make three frag grenades. A cryo grenade. This is a improvised explosive device. When triggered it covers a small area with a rapidly setting cloud of relic dust. Resulting in panic and extreme fatigue. Let's maybe make a few of those. Oh, let's make one. So we need another workbench for the fuel, apparently. A regular, what was it called? Ammunition workbench. Yeah, we don't. We will not find that here. Let's go to the. What is it? Military post. Do we want anything else? I don't think so. I suppose we have enough med kits. Floor level minus three. Garrison and isolation ward. Is there a gun workbench? take the lead again. The point gap is minimal. We expect the intrigue to continue until the end of the game. Don't think so. Hmm. Well, all right then. 26 or 27 fuel for the Flamethrower will have to do. Hello again. Fuel, all right, let's take it all. Shotgun shells. Their marching suit. Mm 
might be useful. Well, evasion minus 10. Let's not change the armor. Focus on getting ammo. Encumbrance. That's fine. See ya. Minus one, lobby. Attention, attention. Let's get to the car, decide on the weapons upgrades we want to do. Kits, spare parts, electrical equipment. Not sure if we need these. Weapon parts. Power cell. And bolts, maybe nails. <laughs> Not sure what we need. I can drop this. Uh, let's see, we want to upgrade the dart gun. Lots of spare parts needed. What about the flamethrower? Now let's first do the dart gun. Then take a look at the flamethrower. Maybe the brass knuckles. Or the shotgun. Well, promise not that proficient, I think, in light weapons. Yeah, I cannot upgrade the laser because we m are missing ICPS. And we are missing spare parts for getting this to level 8. Right, let's maybe check if we can strip some of the weapons. about in the truck any weapons new no. 
let's strip one of these. Cannot strip this. Four of these. And hopefully that will give us some weapon parts. No. Spare parts we need. Alright. <laughs> How do we get spare parts? Strip all the stuff. Spare parts still not available. Right, so cannot upgrade this, cannot upgrade this. We can upgrade the useless energy pistol. To level 5 actually. So it might be a bit more useful. Upgrade this to level 4. And we are done upgrading. Nice detail, the graphics change with an upgrade. And finally, get rid of encumbrance. All these spare parts and other stuff. Now let's get going to our final destination. Camp near Concord. And again, the car floats gently over the road. We look around now and then, we see something in the distance. Well, let's take a closer look. And we notice a flickering a short distance away from the path, as if someone were toying with a lantern. The storm seems to lie in a nearby gully. Down in the gully you come across Upon a weird scene, a ball made from pulsing strips of white light is hovering in mid-air. A half meter above the ground, each strip forms a constantly shifting ring that changes its shape rapidly and chaotically. Like an epileptic Ouroboros. Scan the anomaly. Your Kairos relays the following results from your scan. Uncommon anomaly has at class 3. A code emitter, decoration, light fixture, data storage. So it basically cannot identify it. But it is probably or presumably broadcasting coded information. Decode the signal. You set your carriers to evaluate the data and your portable computer droning and growing warm from the processing load. Translates the object's EMI pattern into a two color image that's nifty. Pixel by pixel, a grainy pictogram appears on screen. A couple of minutes later, you're looking at a desert landscape with hundreds of needle like objects hovering in the sky above. You have no idea what it means. 
observe the phenomenon, small pebbles and grains of sand orbit the anomaly. And the ground beneath it is completely barren within a 2 meter radius. Grass is growing outside this circle. Whatever is nature, this anomaly seems deadly to organic matter. You better not touch it. Well, all right then. <laughs> Let's go. Final rest before we enter. Let's rest till evening, I guess. Fatigue still pretty high. You drop on the bed thinking, boy, I'm looking forward to a proper rest. <laughs> yeah, that's probably not going to happen then. This is your last thought before you sink into a deep, warm darkness. You sleep like a dead dog, like a corpse in a morgue, like a bear in his den. It will take the roar of a a gunfire or a second woodstock to wake you up. Dreamless and perfect. You remember nothing from the moment your head touched the pillow until morning. You awake and rested and refreshed. Your body feels vigorous and your head is ready for whatever new riddles the dome is going to throw at you. Excellent! Some water and some food. And let's go finally. You've reached the camp near the ruins of Concord. In addition to the scientific group supporting your mission, there are representatives of the main political forces of the Dome in the camp. And they have their own vision on of how you should deal with Maelstrom. Upon reaching Concord Station, you found that the expedition had already arrived. It was composed not only of scientists, but also those who helped you in any way with the implementation of your plan. It's quite obvious why they are here. They need something from you. All right. Well. This guy doesn't need anything more. Not sure what happened here. Right, this is of course Concord Station, so... This is the result of the incident, I guess. Judging by the bearing and numerous chevrons on the uniform, this is one of the senior administrators of the new committee. Curly red-haired woman decisively stops you with a powerful gesture. Amelia Reynolds, Silver Wing. I'm to report that new committee picnic and Carmine Heights camps are set up on this side of the highway. That's not all. Fobs have been sighted even further on the outskirts. No idea what they're doing there. Obviously, they're waiting for you. Can you hear me? I hope you can hear me. Well, we can. It's a giant map. Nakamura, Van Olden, Istwani. 
Santiago. So I guess we need to talk to all these guys. And then head for the final confrontation. Presumably. Nakamura. Might also a fender. Picnic. My kind of guys. Multiple vendors. <laughs> Maybe we have been new committee. have been searching for a new weapon and can just get one here. That would be <laughs> quite a waste of money. We still have a lot of money available. Quite a waste of the upgrades, maybe. Hmm. Where is Nakamura? Canisters. <laughs> yeah. Want some advice? Don't make deals with those fascists. It's up to you. But I don't think helping the new committee is a good idea. Just the canister, right? Not sure where Nakamura is. Right. Nakamura is already waiting for you. Cold and straight backed as usual. Standing with her arms folded. She looks you over. Your work for the new committee wasn't exactly flawless. I've long pondered if I should enlist your aid again but haven't come to any definitive conclusion. Convince me. Don't know what you mean. Not exactly flawless. But conviction 150, that's not going to happen. Where are you going? I said we need to discuss something. Kimiko snaps. Her bodyguard blocks your way, making you stop. Nakamura gestures you to sit down. Though she herself remains standing. I'd like to talk about your action at the closing stage of the operation. What you need to do when you contact the Maelstrom. The Silver remains silent for a few moments, gathering the appropriate words. The emulator project was founded to take the Maelstrom under control for the safety of the Dome's inhabitants. And I will not let this control slip into the hands of dubious people. I don't care if someone assumes it to be hijacking. For me, the result is crucial, and there can be neither compromises nor half measure in this matter. I don't care whether or not you believe my course to be right. You're not supposed to give me evaluations. You only must do what I say. Nakamura's yellow bionic eye turns a bit on its axis, aiming at you. Sable brings her a case. Kimiko clicks the turn locks open, lifts the lid, and unfolds the case, showing you its contents. There's a helmet with cables and controllers lying inside. The chairwoman pushes the case toward you. It's kind of an emulator early version, only much weaker. I need you to link it directly to the maelstrom. Do you understand the task? Well... I understand what you're saying, but do we want to do this? Learn if this helmet is to be connected via the emulator or otherwise. The silver looks at the device. I'm no engineer. I don't know all its nuances. I do know, however that Henrietta was going to adjust it right to the Maelstrom's frequency. She had a colleague, a friend, who tried to do that. He failed, but you will succeed. 
Can anyone else use the device? Kimiko shakes her head negatively. No. Each such helmet is adjusted individually to the user's brainwaves. If reset, it should be reconnected to the Maelstrom too. So what are you going to do with this helmet? Nakamura turns the helmet to show you the folded transmitter unit antenna. As soon as you connect it, I'll be able to send signals to the Maelstrom. Right, only option is... We understand. She closes the case and pushes it toward you. That's it then. Get ready and set about the task. Nakamura steps aside and freezes, arms folded. Whatever you think, I do this for the new committee's sake. She says softly as you move away. Did we get a new item? The beta helmet. Also, quest update. Nakamura wishes to have sole control of Maelstrom's force. She gave you a special helmet in order to gain power over the most important and most destructive anomaly of the dome. All you have to do is calibrate the helmet correctly. So it can still opt out. Let's quickly check what this vendor has. The black raises a hand in greeting. I wish you good health. Sorry for not getting up. Paul Bernard from the new committee. My task is to provide you with firearms and ammunition if the need arises. <laughs> so no need to look for ammunition or weapons elsewhere. You can get them on the final location. Yes. <laughs> that was very... A waste of upgrades. Heavy weapons, light. Can use the ammunition. Tactical rifle. Don't think he has any energy weapons though. And they are extremely rare in this game. Now let's get the ammo. And I guess the other factions also have a vendor. And some special instructions. Old V Melville. Henrietta Russo, alright. Well, episode is already pretty long, so I'll make a cut here. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.